just want to put this out there yeah. as far as like the scope of how long we've known each other. When we became friends, we didn't have hair on our penises yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Allison Hagendorf. America, this is the next. Hello, Times Square. To X Games Aspen, I'm Allison Hagendorf. I'm the live announcer of the VMA. Welcome to Rock This with Allison Hagendorf. Y'all, yeah, this is Allison Hagendorf. Hello, my fellow music lovers, and welcome to the Allison Hagendorf Show. Hello, my fellow music lovers, and welcome to the Allison Hagendorf Show. This is where we celebrate the universal love of music and the rock and roll spirit that lives in each of us. I'm so glad you're here. We are coming to you from DWP Studios, and I want to give a shout out to our presenting sponsor, Cloudwater, and our friends at Karma Sauce. These are quality products I love. They are all part of my life and help make this show possible along with you. Your support means the world to me. Thank you. My intense love of music is why I'm standing here today. It's what led me not to pursue a career as a doctor as planned, but instead became a calling that I had to make music my life. So moments like this, when I get to sit down with the artists who I revere, who I have followed for decades, who are part of my personal soundtrack during my imprinting years when I was becoming me, make me feel so incredibly grateful. Incubus are one of those artists for me. I definitely had an Incubus poster on my wall. I may or may not have had a crush on Brandon Boyd. I bought every CD. I went to every concert and festival of theirs I could attend, and I still do. My son, Dylan River, is named after an Incubus song, and I will share the story today with both you and the band. I truly cherish these opportunities, and I love that you are here with me for all of these experiences and full circle moments. When we come back, I'll be sitting down with Brandon, Mike, and Nicole of Incubus. I am truly looking forward to it. Stay tuned. One thing about me is that I work hard and play hard, and this functionally fun botch from Cloudwater helps me do that. These are my people. Listen to what it says inside. The world would be a better place if fun people lived forever. Yes, I subscribe to this. I feel seen. Inside, we have organic caffeine, we have daily defense, immunity, and CBD, which I imbibe every single afternoon. I think you'll enjoy this. Go to cloudwaterbrands.com, use my code Allison30 for 30% off, and let me know what you think. Cheers. My guests today are members of one of my favorite bands. I have been listening to them for nearly 30 years. They have sold over 23 million albums worldwide, and they are about to embark on an arena tour celebrating the reimagination of their album, Morning View and they also have new music on the way. I am talking about multi-platinum Los Angeles band Incubus, Brandon, Mike, and Nicole. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. I am so genuinely grateful that you're here. And I was thinking the last time that we actually sat down was when I was the head of Rock at Spotify and you guys came in to play me the album Eight. So that was probably like, mm. 2017, 2017 or before like yeah 2017 years ago <laughs> and it really does feel that way right it's kind of different does. world isn't it <laughs> but even moments like that for me and i was trying to explain to you like i am such a massive fan and i and i actually brought like exhibit a to share with you guys and i have it hidden right here <laughs> oh God, i have every single cd wow at least in the cd era so actually i don't yeah. have eight i actually don't have eight on CD. I'm not sure we put that one on a CD. Okay, because I actually don't have that one, but I just wanted to show everyone that I little. Oh, and Morning View is actually signed. Oh, nice. Wow. Okay. And for the kids at home, CDs you put yes. onto what's called a record player, yes. and you drop a needle onto them. Also, I even have a live at Red Rocks on DVD wow. with me. I just wanted to share this as well. Nice. Oh, yeah. Such a good do, do I have cred now? Yeah. I feel like it's like next level. That yeah, one's next printed. level cred. Yeah, thank that you. That one's printed to Laserdisc as well. Yeah. So I just, I just wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to start off by just like bringing in my CD collection. I love it. Um, and Nicole, I'm yeah. so glad that you're here. Yeah, me too. What does this new role mean to you? I mean, this is a big deal. Um, what does this new role mean to me? Um, for me, it's much more intimate. Like yeah. with these guys. Yeah. This new, like creative experience with them. Um, I've always just been like a hired gun. She's going to make a me lot cry. Of projects. I know. Can, it's okay. You can cry. You can cry here. It's safe. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's much more just about kind of like hanging out with them and getting to know them. And, you know, we're just making music and having fun. It's, it's a bit of a crash course, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. we met Nicole. We were like, hey, nice to meet you. Do you, do you. Wow, you're good. 
you want to come on tour with us forever, like tomorrow? <laughs> full, <laughs> full crash course. And she gets in the bus with essentially strangers. Yes. And it's actually a kind of a cool way to get to know someone, though, because it's so intimate, so fast. Mm-hmm. You're just like, and then we're yeah. on stage, and then we're, you know, running around. We went around Europe and UK, and yeah. now we're going to go. Yeah down to New Zealand it's and unbelievable. Australia and Asia and everything so yeah she's Pretty been wild. great yeah we actually met, Ben Ben our longtime bass player who had mm-hmm. been with us for yes. over 20 years who we loved deeply mm-hmm. you know when we were sort of going through this process with him um, he actually recommended contacting Nicole oh. mm-hmm. he That's he was silly. he was That's like awesome. <laughs> Ben, Ben's one of those musicians who can kind of play any instrument better than anyone else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so he was like, this girl, Nicole, is like super legit. And I was like, do you know her? He was like, he was like no, I don't mm-hmm. know her. <laughs> <laughs> what a compliment. So I, I, I literally like DM Nicole. I'm like, mm-hmm. what's up, Nicole? And she's, she writes back, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> what's good? Nicole, I love you. And, I was on a plane. I was like half alive coming she, back from she, Europe. She, she was coming back from Europe. <laughs> good. What's good? No, this is this is That's a true weird. story. She was coming back from Europe. She had, and I didn't even realize the timing of this that they were ending. You know, Panic at the Disco was winding down. Um, I knew vaguely there was something like that happening, but she was like, I literally just played my last show, and I was like, um, when can you be in LA? And mm. she was like. Um, I don't know when do you need me in LA and it was like Friday or something and I was like uh, Monday and she was like I'll be there and Incredible. she just like she she, she came and the three of us like just met up and it was just like one of those things that like I think all things in my life I would I would guess Brandon probably agrees with this and maybe Nicole too like some things just happen effortless, effortlessly yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and it was just like that and, it's meant um, to be it's been that way since, right. so that's we, incredible. We, I, I feel incredibly, incre- incredibly lucky. Yeah, Nicole, I will say that I had the great fortune of seeing you play with Panic at the Disco, headlining Reading. Oh, shit. that yeah. show. Yeah, I was there to witness that magic. That was so an fun. incredible <laughs> night, and I, I think that's when I, I became smitten with you. Mm-hmm. I think when I saw you at that show, I was like, wow. This girl is a badass. You're incredible. <laughs> You're such a great player. You have amazing stage presence. And I just thought you were like the coolest. And I've been a fan ever since. When I found this out, this was happening. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, this was a whole ne- let's ambush Nicole. Moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not whole day is about you. I'm like a book coffee. I'm like, <laughs> we're, we're writing a book about you, Nicole. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but how special that you are really you are part of this and the reimagined Morning View. I really want to hear more about this. I just need, to, first of all, echo. Absolutely gorgeous. Your voice it sounds the best it's ever sounded. You're very very sweet. I spent the first. 10 days after it came out, uh, like, you know, I think we spoke briefly mm-hmm. about it. Like, I made the deep, deep mistake of reading any comments. I, I've, um, I've done a really good job in most of our career of, like, staying out of the comment section. Yes. I've turned them <laughs> off Wait. mostly yeah. on my social yeah. media feeds. And I was excited about it coming out because we worked really hard mm-hmm. on this reimagining of this record. And the first, like, 500 comments were just brutal it was like like go kill yourself brandon yeah <laughs> what's like, wrong with people like, yeah, it's insane the thing is is what i so i really appreciate you saying yeah. so thank you um i think it sounds pretty good too um i think all of us did mm-hmm. a really good job um we it was it was a it was a heroic undertaking mm-hmm. for us to take something that's over 20 years old that has been uh listened to combed over uh loved hated but like a lot of people have listened to that record right like yeah. a lot of people uh, yeah. over a long period of time so it was it was a uh it was a big it was a big confident brush stroke to be like here we did it again yeah, yeah. you know what i mean so mm-hmm. it was kind of asking for it so now that i have a couple of weeks of um of uh hindsight with the release i'm kind of like yeah, it sounds a little bit different. Like uh, we've all aged twenty plus years. Of course, it years. sounds different. It's not the same thing. We're not so trying to make try- it the same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But 
we're really excited about it and we're really excited to go and perform it in mm -hmm. an arena near you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, we were like literally kids yeah. when we made that album and it's, it's crazy to think back about it now. Um, the experience of making it and then re re-recording it, reimagining it was, as Brandon said, like super fun, like in ways that I wouldn't have anticipated. And we almost yeah. put it out as a uh, live performance. So the, we did a, uh, a live stream during the pandemic from the house where we wrote and recorded mm -hmm. the album. And it was really fun. It was its own thing. Uh, it happened once. I don't think that, I think there might be like bootleg things floating around YouTube here and there of that performance. But we were thinking about putting that out as like Morning View Live as a sort of 20 year anniversary thing. Um, and then I was listening to it. And I don't know if you remember this conversation. I was like, I think we should, I think we should re-record this in a studio. This kind of feels too important to just kind of like, here's us playing it live. Because it sounded good, but it wasn't like, I just wanted it to be something heavier. Yeah. Like really like, let's take a look at it now for real. And then that was before Nicole joined the band. And so we started redoing it in the studio. And then mm -hmm. your parts started coming to, to life and all these different ways we've been playing certain parts of the songs live, like an echo, there's this yes. like new extended ending. Yeah, I love that. Um, it just became a, a new project. It was really fun. We actually, I'm realizing this now. Wasn't your father a Marlboro, Marlboro man? Is that true? It's a hard oh word God. to it say, is. isn't it? Marlboro man. Marlboro. Marlboro, Marlboro. man. Marlboro. Um, <laughs> my dad was a Salem cigarette. It was Salem cigarettes. Okay. It was... Uh, the year I was born in 1976, he was a Salem cigarette model. Oh my God. Which is ironic because you couldn't meet a dude who's more like anti smoking than my dad. There he is again. There but, he is again. Um, these, however, <laughs> show what, what? So when we, when we started this band, when we were in high school. Oh God. Please stop. Very, very, very heavily influenced by psychode psych oh. psychedelic substances. And, um, just in spirit. That's really, yeah. really where our music came from, just to be honest. It sounds so like that. It right does, now. which is why I like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm game. <laughs> What's good? We What's good? I'm using that forever. Much. I'm literally using that forever. We haven't gone there as much, but... <laughs> Speak for yourself. We should we should kind of like maybe just revisit We're that. You know? We should and I see mean, what like, just a, just a thought experiment. Just one day in the week. <laughs> it's the reimagined fungus among us. That's the totally. next album. Just a that thought experiment. You know, like you know, the jungle of Peru for a day or two. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll figure that out. But I'm there. Nicole's right. there. All right. I'm glad you're here for it. But I, I can't even imagine like the emotion that may have come up when 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 reimagining Morning View. Mm. Um, what was that process like for you? Because that's just extremely emotional to revisit these songs. Mm -hmm. It definitely reminded me of that moment in not only like our lives collectively, but it was a very particular moment for us as a band. Yes, uh, because we um, while we were writing the record we had a song from the previous record that like went to the pop charts mm -hmm. and like went into the pop stratosphere kind of around the world a song called drive and so we were home writing a record and we had what uh, in the parlance of the day you'd call a hit single yeah it was um and so it was really exciting and i feel like if we maybe were in a more traditional studio setting surrounded by um, people from our record label or managers and stuff, we might have felt some of the pressure of that. Mm -hmm. But we were isolated in like way, 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 way up in northern Malibu and no one wanted to drive out there. So we were just like, <laughs> we were just by that ourselves in this empty, squatting in this empty mansion with just wires mm -hmm. everywhere. And we were just having a fantastic time. That's awesome. And so there was a sense of excitement mm -hmm. and momentum, which is something that and that made. wasn't random either too by the way that was actually something that it was by design yeah. there were there were actually a lot of people around us because we were having so much success at the time there were a lot of people around us that did not want us to do that they thought we were just gonna like party and yeah. not turn in a record right um, like but yeah. we were very 
self-motivated by our own vision <laughs> for, for, <laughs> for stuff. Yeah. And, um, and thank goodness for that. Cause yeah. it's like, it really could not have, it may not have turned out that way, but we, yeah. we didn't, you know, we just, we just had this whole vision for how we wanted to do it. And now that I'm older, I don't, don't know how you feel about it. Like, I kind of can't believe we did, we actually did it. <laughs> like, it's yeah. like, like, it's like the <laughs> unlikeliness of, saying no to like all of these like real experienced like music business people and then finally like a few key people being like okay all right you guys like we see that you want to do this and we're gonna go along with it it's pretty crazy to think about like at that time like you said drive was massive like Mm -hmm. your fan base had now evolved into mainstream lots of Females. I myself had an Incubus poster on my wall, proudly. You know, I mean, <laughs> your lives changed, you know, yeah. drastically. It was a very transformative period of time, for, without question. You know what's so interesting, though, about these moments? Because we've had different sort of sequences of these kinds of moments throughout our career. And they're wonderful and they're exciting. And we sort of, we we want for those things to happen. We want for a lot of people to hear and see what we're making because we care about it and all those things. But the interesting thing to me, the first at that first sort of like moment of like, wow, it's really all coming together. I was in the midst of uh, a breakup. Mm-hmm. And I was properly like heartbroken. And I was excited about everything that was going on, but it was occurring to me while we were making this record, but it was like, wow, like it's just, it's, it's still, Life, all of the things that happen in life yeah. still happen. You just add this extra thing on top of it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so actually, in a lot of ways, I'm really thankful that we have uh, a vehicle to um, make sense of all of the things that happen you. in the life. Yeah. In a way, it, it, it is a grounding mechanism for me. Yeah. In a way, it's yeah. a way that I sort of have been able to make sense of the normal things in my life. Um, Falling in love, falling out of love, heartbreak, um, new, old. Dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like, you, you, could, you could call it like the sacred and the mundane. Like, it's yeah. all there. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do. All of those things, you still have to shit and wipe your ass. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, it, yeah. it doesn't matter. Well, Mikey doesn't. but Yeah. No. no. But when he's Michael. <laughs> when he's Michael. Oh, my God. <laughs> In this experience, like we said, I think your voice sounds incredible. <clears throat> how are you staying in shape? You know, like how are you staying so conditioned? These are challenging vocal parts. I mean, you're holding notes out longer than the original. You know, how are you getting to this point? Um, thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm curious too. Yeah, I still can't keep up with you on the. I, I try to right. get. <laughs> I try. I try to get Brandon to like, because a lot of singers like you know will drop the keys down. Because yeah. What we do, oh, yeah. what we do when we're like 18 uh-huh. years old well, is not the same as when we're like 47, 48 years old. But like most of the time, Brandon's like, nope. That's what I'm saying. The yeah. thing is, it is, and I've said this to uh, quite a few different people it, in different contexts around certain versions of that question. But um, and I'm curious as to what you guys think about this too, mm-hmm. from a, a technical musician standpoint. But singing is like 85% a head game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some kind of brawn and maintenance involved, but for the most part, it is, uh, it's it's a psychological thing. And if you're right in that department, then you can kind of do some of the same things you could do when you were a kid. It's really easy to to fall away from it because our, you know, our psychologies are are plastic and we're strange monkeys and stuff like that. But, Mm -hmm. I found that the more right I am in that department, uh-huh. you know, and the more I work on that, yeah. the easier it is to get to those places. Sometimes it's fucking hard, and mm-hmm. I can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, there's like so there's so many impeding factors. Like we travel, you know. Yeah. So like we have a germy job. It, it's mm-hmm. it's yeah. that part of it. As we get older, like it's definitely like way it's harder. grueling. It's yeah. Gr- it's grueling. So I think finding a balance between sometimes you know like us as players maybe not so much as singers but it does include singing 
it's like you know your your body can only handle so much wear and tear mm -hmm. so is there a psychological like, element involved in it though when you're 100 playing you, yeah yeah for for yeah. sure for that without question so if there's a way to to maybe you know like make something slightly more tolerable while you know keeping in the right headspace to just mm -hmm. achieve the right balance like but you see like the like rolling stones and shit like, oh my god it, it's like it's like dude like they did all the fucking drugs yeah, they did, like, yeah. but their headspace you know. is you know when you <laughs> see bands like that like what do you guys think do you love that this thing is awesome isn't that awesome have it be melting on my knee i love it staring at it too. i love that I, I just want to wear it yeah it kind of looks like it go for it do you want to wear it please i kind of do we should make it uh, like an incubus hat <laughs> Yeah. And sell it. Mm -hmm. I love it. It goes over one yeah, eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like an eye patch. <laughs> so a disco eye patch. It's a disco yeah. eye It's whatever you want it to be. It's a disco lens. That should be lens. our uh, our side project. That's sort of a more BTS kind of a thing. Disco lens. Instead of bulletproof Boy Scouts, yeah. we're like disco eye patch. Yeah, I, do, I like, I, yeah, I like anything to do, anything that has to do with like yeah. pirates yeah. being uh -huh. swarthy. Yeah. We're down. We're, See, well. you heard it here first, guys. I mean, this is incredible. <laughs> Actually, when we were talking about the original Morning View timing, not only was you guys on this global, super, you know, this global superstardom like arena, but the timing of everything. The album came out October, mm -hmm. and before that, on September fifteenth, two thousand one, at Hammerstein Ballroom, I was there for that show. Oh my god! I was. So wow. this was four days after the September 11th yeah. attacks. Yeah. Didn't we do two shows? You at did Emerson? 15th and 16th. Two nights. Wow. I told you. I remember. And uh, you know, as and I'm a New Yorker, and you guys were in town for it. I know. And everything was canceled. Mm -hmm. And you guys decided that actually we do. This is when we do need music. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that the show at Hammerstein. So the 15th was the first night. And I remember. And, I try to explain to people how eerie it was. New York is the most electric city in the world. It was quiet. quiet. It was dead. It was mm -hmm. quiet. It was like tumbleweeds. Mm -hmm. Like it was the eeriest, quiet, yeah. no one around. Yeah. And then going into that show, it felt, you could feel. Mm -hmm. And I remember you with the, like the drums and like that just, it was such mm -hmm. a primal, beautiful, human connection. Yeah. What did that feel like for you guys? It felt like that. You yeah. just described it really yeah. beautifully. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, there were there were candles. Yeah, I remember it, it was like, and those shows had been sold out for a long time, and we were really excited to play the shows. Mm -hmm. And I was actually in LA when that happened. I had flown okay. home for like a day, and I was going to fly back. And then it became uncertain how I was going to get back oh, to okay. play the show. So it became this whole ordeal, like getting me back from LA to the East Coast to play the shows. And um, it, yeah, it was pretty indescribable. Mm -hmm. like, it's indescribable. Like, I mean, I, I, the, the September, the, the events of September 11th, like I had never experienced anything like that in my life. Mm. None of us. No Any of us. Yeah. No one. And they were all like right next to it. They right. were, they were blocks no, away. The they were, I remember like they were staying at the, where were you guys? Wow. Brandon, yeah. were you guys at the Tribeca Grand Hotel? We were. Mm -hmm. We were in, uh, we were just on the border of like Soho. So it, like, we were close enough. My windows away. were open that morning, and when the planes hit, our hotel yeah. like, rattled like an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the so scary. Car alarms were going off, and um, mm -hmm. I have a, not to take away from the gravity of the situation, but I have a funny anecdote about my first reaction mm -hmm. once the second plane hit. And I knew that it wasn't like the first one. I thought it was an accident, accident, right? We all like thought that. A horrible, that. horrible accident. Second plane hit, and our hotel. And I was like, I was dating this this really cool girl from Canada, and I was like, get up, put your shoes on, like thinking we'd have to run. And I was like, brush your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> she was like, oh, what? Brush and your our, but we brush up because like and I, when the hygiene next time, is important at all times. You know, the next time yeah. you're gonna get to brush your teeth. Right. I thought we were gonna have to run towards yeah. the river. Yeah. yeah. It was like, what is happening here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was gonna it helps. Traumatized her every time she goes to brush her teeth. She's no, like, brush I mean, your teeth. Yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah. So wait, where where were you? You were in I elementary was, school. You were I was like in ten, bed and I was a little yeah. kid. Yeah. I wow. woke up and saw it on the TV in the morning before school. One more quick yeah. anecdote about yeah, of course. that first morning. I went downstairs to see if I could talk to someone from the hotel. 
if they knew anything was going on. And I went down into the lobby, and there was a lobby bar, as there is in yeah. hotels in New York. It was completely packed, packed. by 9 a.m., and people were chugging mm -hmm. booze. Yeah. Like, this is it. They were, but it was like overflowing, like it was a full blown That's party. Just yeah. Gl gl like glugging wow. it down. Um, anyway, back to the shows. Yeah. The shows were, um, it, they were incredible memories, I think, for all of us, too. Mm -hmm. uh, they were actually kind of challenging in a way, though, because I, I was having to like go back a ton of uh, emotion. Mm -hmm. um, there were, there are a couple of like lyrics in some of the songs we've been playing in our sets that had like these weird direct links to these feelings in that exact moment. So I'd be singing and be like, oh, you know, yeah. trying not to yeah. cry, yeah. Yeah. you know? Um, and then seeing everybody kind of emoting back with us and at a certain point I just kind of surrendered to it and mm -hmm. let it become an emotional experience. But I'm so glad that you were there. That's so cool. I have to tell you, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. Well, that was a perfect example of how music is medicine, you know? Mm -hmm. It was Absolutely. just, wow, what an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. And but all of your live shows are like that. I'm so excited about this tour coming up. Mm -hmm. And I love Coheed and Cambria. Yeah, they're awesome. They're, they are an incredible band. Yeah. Uh, Claudio and I are from the same hometown. We went to neighboring oh, cool. high schools. Oh, wow. Yeah, I worked with Coheed when I was at Columbia Records. So oh, when I found out that you guys were going to be together on tour, I'm like, thank you. We did thank a, you for this. We did yeah. a brief run with them last, was that last year? It was, yeah. Um, and they were really, really sweet, and they kill it live. Yeah, uh, one and of the best live bands. Such a good, yeah. Our audience right? was really, Crazy. So they were really Insane. responsive yeah. to them, too. So it just, it felt like a really good kind of no-brainer type yeah, of a parent. Claudio is such a sweet guy. Mm -hmm. He really, really is. Really nice he guy. Is. He came out one time and hung out with me in Malibu for a couple of days and like we we like made some music together and just got to hang out together for a couple of days and like had, had just had just had a lot of fun. Such a great guy. He so. is so great and I love that he and I have that hometown connection and then you guys, it's just a while to think with the Lincoln Park guys. Mm -hmm. You guys are from the same town. We had Mike Shinoda on the show and I asked him mm -hmm. about Incubus. He's like, you know what, bizarrely, no one really asks me often about us. Cause we, but it's weird, you guys went to neighboring high schools, right? We yeah, we did. Yeah. In fact, my, like, my brother went to, went to summer school with, uh, with uh, Rob, I think. That's One of so the other guys funny. in the band. Yeah. Like, and summer then school? A, and then we had a bunch of, <laughs> then we had a bunch of other like other mutual. We had a lot of like friend overlap, so we weren't like exactly from the same town, but like I mean, it's like three highway stops. There away. weren't right, any, right, right, right. There weren't any other bands. It was yeah. like, you know what I mean? There were like a couple bands, and like they were one of them. You know, so did like, you think it was weird that you both were coming into like massive stardom at the same time, coming from the same place? No, it makes perfect sense. And just want to say something to the kids out there: if you're starting bands, make sure you're literally the only band in town. <laughs> <laughs> Works like a charm. <laughs> Look at us. And hey, that's hey. how you do it. <laughs> How do you make it? Make sure there's no competition. <laughs> but, I mean, but there was like, like Incubus and Lincoln Park are two of the biggest bands in the world. You know, it was really together. fun when we toured when we toured together yeah. because it, it was kind of one of the one of these things where like people had kind of been proposing it to us for years and it just never like kind of came together. And finally, it was like okay, I don't remember what year it was, but we actually did it. Maybe twenty like fourteen. I think it was twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Yeah. Like we actually did it. It was like. It was like, oh, we all made it. <laughs> like, how fun, you know? And like, Ooh. you know, and it's it's so sad that Chester is not here, you know? Like, yeah. like, um, and uh, but you know, That's I know crazy. all those other guys, and and Mike is. Shinoda, oh. great friend, great guy, well, wonderful human being. Yeah, all those guys, love those guys, and you know, proud of them for. I mean, we're all all of us are just kids who made music in the garage. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like none of yeah. us like had like a parent who ran a record label yeah. or anything like that. Like we we're just kids who made music. Yeah. So anyone can do it. You and Chester are both two of like the great vocalists, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you guys ever connect about that or what, you know, what was your sort of relationship? We didn't really talk about singing much. Um, it was mostly just kind of like shooting the shit. He was mm -hmm. an exceedingly sweet man. Yeah. I really, I think the, the world is, um, not as nice of a place without him in it. Yeah. You know, we miss him all the time. But I always kind of marveled at his ability to 
sing, like actually mm -hmm. sing, sing. Yes. But then scream, scream like that. Yeah. Like Wild. you know, there was like a demon Person. somewhere in his body that he was exercising and. And then sing again. I know. There was something like uh, another singer who I admired growing up who was also uh, an acquaintance as uh, Mike Patton from yes. uh, Faith No More, Faith no More. Mr. Bungle, Phantom mm -hmm. Moss, any number of different bands, uh, Dead Cross. Uh, that dude can like sing, like really, really sing. And then it sounds like he's like stabbing his throat with hot <laughs> pokers. And then, hey, Brandon, how are you? Right. Like, I'm going to go do another show. You want to come? And he'll do, we, we oh toured Mr. Bungle and he's like, can I ride with you guys on the bus tonight? I got a thing in New York tonight after the show we already did. And then he went and did another show. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know how they, I don't know how people do that. I'm, I'm good for one a day. Yeah. I mean, I think so. You are a human being. Right. Who else influenced you growing up? Because I know that Faith No More and Mike Patton for sure. Yeah. What else? What about you, Nicole? I listened to an insane amount of Sublime growing up. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's how I accidentally <laughs> ended up playing a bass. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. That's yes. it. I, oh, that's basically it. Enough yeah. said. Sublime. Um, yeah. And then I got really into like hardcore music and, and then it went into like funk and disco. And then I kind of went through all these like series she, of different genres. She really, really, really had it like an emo streak though. Oh, I absolutely. Like, oh my God. You who did see it? our photos. Yeah. Our emo photos that we've done together are great. Um, but yeah, had the whole emo thing, like hair over the one hair. side. It was like dyed all kinds of different colors. I even had like a mullet with like a rat tail. And It was know, never a phase. It was, well, <laughs> you know, it's a lifestyle. that's all my mom. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. Yeah. I had a rat tail. <laughs> you had, Oh my God. I was super into breakdancing when I was between the ages of like I'm seven sorry. and ten. Really? Yeah. Wait, do we have you, video of this breakdancing? This was like the and early 80s. Incredible. Yeah. That's, your, that's really cool. I was never good at breakdancing, but like to have the rat tail in yeah. the 80s while that's you were you like need, yeah. popping and locking was That's important. so cool. Yeah. yeah is it though? I think so. <laughs> I, I think so. Some lessons, that would be pretty sweet. Right? Mikey and I growing up together listened to... Uh, a lot of the same music and then I feel like what has kept our band fun and maybe interesting is the fact that we've properly diverged in some of our musical tastes and then realigned and then diverged and realigned. That's, yeah, so that's interesting. So we grew up, we're, I say this all the time, but I count us as extraordinarily fortunate to have been 15 years old in 1991. Yeah. You know what I mean? There yes. were so many. The early 90s. It was a All renaissance. All the way through it was. like the late 90s, it was just like yeah. wave after wave of just this incredible, especially like rock and alternative music. Yeah. It was like a, like a, a real uh, golden era, in my opinion. So we came up on all those bands. And then what's wild is we ended up uh, opening up for most of those bands That's at some point and touring with them. So we got to like see, not only have the education in our ears, but then like get to know some of these people and play with them. Like who is and someone that you got to open for and you were like, how is this happening? This so many. I mean, it's like, <laughs> you know, every band, every rock band, and there were a lot of other bands that were not rock bands, but like, you know, everybody from like the Red Hot Chili Peppers yeah. and Rage Against the Machine and um, uh, like, you know, Soundgarden who became, and we did, we did tour with Soundgarden and also, and so Audio Slave. And Audio Slave. Like, this whole Jane's addiction, like these are all the bands that like. like they're why we're a band. Essentially. That's they're why we're yeah. a band, oh. and then like and like all of a sudden we're like, you know, on airplanes with them talking about like the festivals we're playing the next day, and it's like, mm -hmm. how the fuck does that happen? That's awesome. Like, like yeah. we're just kids in the garage playing music. Like they're like once again, so, only band in town. <laughs> <laughs> but like so like I, just for example, like I worship Bjork. Yeah. Bjork was like, probably even to this day, mm -hmm. like my favorite singer artist like of all time. But then I would be listening to Slayer. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I just, I, I had a very idiosyncratic um, taste in music. Mm -hmm. Probably drove half of my friends crazy because I would be like, we listen to cassettes. Yeah. And we'd be in my car and I'd listen to like 30 seconds of something and then pop something out and put oh, something yeah. else in. Like and I remember CD. Brandon being, oh. Brandon would be like, can you just leave that in there? Like, <laughs> like, but I we just, were like DJing. Basically. That's just how yeah. I, my brain just worked that way. And like, but we listened to a ton of sublime also, like yeah. 40 ounces of freedom. And free, no, you know, it's kind of the same. It's, you know, it's just like it's Robin the hood. Thing, like, which is why you're so like the songs that are being created are so unique. 
you know, you yeah. see all these different eclectic things coming together. That's but to me, it. of course, to me, all of it was exactly the same thing. Yeah. For whatever reason, it all got filed under one sort of bucket in my mind. Mm. Mm. So it was like when it when it came time for us as a band to like start constructing things, I I didn't really think twice about like what we were doing it mm -hmm. just was like oh we're gonna we're gonna put this here and then we're gonna put this there and if it feels good then it feels good and that's it that's what's so special about incubus though and, and you've said like your diversity is like um it's what makes us great but it's also been a challenge at times too because yeah. people don't know what to do with you and you were like erroneously called new metal at one point because simply because the bands around you were doing that you well know? it was it had metal elements and it was yeah. new <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Did you think that yeah. was strange when you were getting the new metal label? I, it felt it really so like weird. it felt really point. insulting at a at a particular <laughs> point in time. But like <laughs> now, like twenty years uh, later, plus whatever yeah. it is, like it's just like who cares? Yeah. Right. I mean, but like, at the time, I I thought it was bizarre. I did too. Uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't feel like. I mean, we played with a lot of you know when we when we started touring, the bands that we would just tour with were the Deftones, Korn, Korn yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and System of a Down. Yeah. Like that was just, like those were our friends yeah. and we played mm -hmm. shows together and they were fucking bonkers. Like yeah. everywhere that we went with all those artists, like shit would just go absolutely crazy. And it was just like- There was shit flying everywhere. Shit everywhere. Like, was it wild? I, like what was that like? <laughs> Don't you want to know? I want to know like what it was like <laughs> at that time. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> honestly, it was, it was, it was total insanity. It was, it was insanity? It was total insanity. Like, I mean, we'd Like, play, give me an example. I'm trying to get like a picture, play, a snapshot. We would play yeah. in these clubs. Something hitting you in the head. Right. That's we'd play cool in these clubs and there'd be, you know, a thousand or two thousand people in the clubs. Uh. They'd be completely packed. And the second we'd go on stage, or System would go on stage, or the Deftones would go on stage, you know, or Korn would go on stage, like, it would just be like, the energy yeah. never went, died down, you know? Like, mm -hmm. all the people that were there were really there for it. Mm -hmm. and so, I was one of them. So, it, and it felt like, to me, it felt like we were a huge band, you know? Like, in the scheme of things, it's like we were, like, this, like, almost, like, playing these, like, little local venues, but to me, that was like, that was huge. <laughs> and it, so it just felt like we were on a trajectory. And, um, you know, and, and, and all those bands, like, were always really, like, we were all really cool with each other. And we had a great time together. And, you know, and, and uh, we, I think to this day, even, like, we still, all of us, have a lot of appreciation for, like, just what we, what we all experienced. Cause, yeah. Because of how unique that actually is. Like what an era that was. Do you still keep in touch with any of those bands like Korn and Deftones? Yeah, yeah I do. With, I talk to them all the time. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really special. And then to think you can have a song, you know, opening for Korn and then having a song like Aqueous Transmission, which I want to talk about. That's a Bjork inspired song. Right? I, I would mm -hmm. consider it more like a, like a Disney Fantasia meets Portis Head type song. But, but we were definitely, yes. Mikey. Mm -hmm. There's a, a longer story to how that song uh, came to be, but I'm going to give you the truncated yeah, version. Yeah, I want it. Yeah. Uh, guitar Hero. This is the. This is someone being a guitar hero. Uh, guitar Hero That's Steve it. Vai oh. uh, gave gifted Mike a pipa. A Chinese pipa. Yes. Yes. And he's like, Mikey was like, I don't know how to play this. He's like, Which yeah. is a four stringed Chinese instrument that resembles a guitar in a yeah. way. Mm -hmm. So Mikey brings it back to the house at Morning View where we were living and making this record. And um, he and I just. Steve made me one promise. What did he say? Because I didn't want to take it from him. Oh. Um, I, he was like, I want to give this to you. And I was like, I can't take this from you. And he was like, You can. You just have to make me one promise. And the promise is you have to write something cool with it. Okay. And I was like, Okay. So he came oh, back, oh, <laughs> the fear of God in his yes. eyes. Yes, <laughs> a lot of pressure. We, and we, we basically stayed up all night one night in the way we had our gear set up in this big, beautiful living room of this house. We had our little early sort of computer technologies 
mm-hmm. in that room. And we, uh, he just started, you know, fooling around and that riff sort of emerged. And then uh, I started singing stuff and he was like, I remember you saying like, make it more weird, make it more Disney, more Bjork. You kept giving me these like very strange cues. Mm-hmm. And so I started to like, make the vocal sound even more kind of like bendy and trilly and stuff. And then we we wrote it in like a couple of days, but most of it happened that one no, night. It was that wow. one night. It, yeah. got, it got sort of assembled over the course of a few days, but we wrote all the music that night. Mm-hmm. It all happened. Wow. In one, it all happened in one night. So fun. We I should do to... something else like that. And yes. another weird part of the story is that um, many years later, I emailed Steve about something totally unrelated and he was like oh and by the way the song aqueous transmission is on repeat in my house um, he didn't even know that he, he that gave that me was... the instrument Aww. the instrument that he was that instrumental inspired song yeah. that inspired this he didn't even know <laughs> yeah so that that was pretty funny that is special yeah i also have to tell you the role that this song has played in my life so like steve Vai, i listen to this song every day <laughs> it is actually a meditative song for me right and when I was pregnant with my second son, I was, it was, it was like 2022, I was going through a personal stressful time. And when you're pregnant, you need to like really be calm. Mm-hmm. And in my backyard, I had this amazing photo of like the, this ocean wave. So I like sat down in front of the ocean wave and I put on aqueous transmission and I'm like, breathe, you know, and the, the Chinese peepaw comes in, thank you, Mike. And I'm just listening and then your vocal comes in and floating down a river and I'm like really visualizing like this river and the water. And then you get to your vocal part, you're like float, you know, further down the river for like over and over again. And I was like, oh my God. And it was in that moment, I was like, you know what? Everything is gonna be fine. And then the river, river, and then I named my son Dylan River mm, after yeah. that moment. Yeah. That's so cool. And it was so magical. And Dylan means of the sea. So it's like this water aqueous. Yeah. And then the river What's was his literally birthday? your it's seven eleven. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So you should know that it was like you saying river to me combined with the pipa yeah. that gave me that moment. So thank you. That's amazing. It was really, oh. it was really the pipa. <laughs> it was, it yeah. was the pipa. Yeah. This is giving me this cool idea because some, I know something happens to me and I'm so curious to, at your thoughts and your thoughts on this too. But with um, making music is, um, in my experience, when it's working the best, you're just playing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're just you're playing literally. It's not I mean, we say we're playing music, but to me, when it's working the best, we're literally like adults. Playing. Yes. Um, so when I discover a new instrument or I find a new place in my voice that feels novel or something, it almost always inspires some novel musical idea. Mm-hmm. I think that's what happened with you when you got the pipa in your hand. You're like, I don't know how to play this thing, but it's sort of like a guitar. You know, um, we should try that as a uh, as an art experiment it's no, like I mean, I today like, oh. it's kazoos only no, right oh my god right okay. yeah <laughs> yeah but i feel like that and what you're just de- what you're describing <laughs> i feel like what you're describing brandon uh, is like absolutely true it's kind of like i experience this all the time with my kids mm-hmm. because when my kids have like friends come over maybe like all know their parents but the kids haven't met yet the kids all come over and like the kids are meeting each other for the first time, and it's like, oh, you play? And they're like, yeah, I play. You play too? And like, oh, come on. And they just run off and do their job. Yeah. It's like they're just doing their job. You know, mm-hmm. like they, they, they know how to play. And it's like what Brandon's talking about, which is like, oh, let's, let's just, we're gonna play. Let's just play. Yeah. So like that's really, and Hans Zimmer actually, he talks about that all the time. Really? Like that's something yeah. that he talks that about sense. all the time. Like that as a, as somebody who's, you know, an artist or musician, composer, whatever you want to call it, like, that's what we do. We play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And par- a big part of the creative aspect of what we're doing is we're just playing. I think that yeah. the bands that maybe survive are the ones that don't lose touch with that. Yeah. That's hey, that well, that's, and that's also play. the biggest challenge, I think. Well, because is, it becomes a career. And right. you're like, I got to pay my mortgage. You know, we better write something oh that God. people like. Yeah. And if, as long as you can stave that off, or at least put it into perspective, mm-hmm. I feel like the longer you'll make music and you'll make well, music that you actually want to hear. That's how yeah. we wrote the Morning View record in the midst of all this commercial success with with yeah. Make, yeah. Yourself yourself. Or with Drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could imagine a scenario where all this commerce is happening 
and everybody that is making money, including ourselves, mm-hmm. like want to continue that. They gave you some of that money? And it's like, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that later. What? <laughs> um, but it's one of those things, though, where everybody that's benefiting it from a business perspective wants to continue that, mm-hmm. if not amplify it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the, the, the motivation to want to do that can definitely interfere with that process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, we, for whatever reason, had the instinct to like, you know, we didn't get to that position by doing that. We got to that position by being like, every one of you, fuck off. Like, we're going to do what we love you. Do. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. But let but... us do us. Yeah. Like, we yeah. need to do us. Like, we yeah. need to do us. Yeah. And we have to, and we've, you know, to this day, like, done some version of that. You mm-hmm. have. Um, but it feels like now is, like, just a brand new version of that. Yeah. Which is exciting. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah. With uh, other bands that you've played with, how much have, like, record labels or managers or people been in the room while you were writing or recording a record with somebody and they and people who are not in the band dictating what was going to happen not as often as you think okay that's great i'm yeah. so happy yeah. to hear that because our experience has been the music every bit of music we've put out we've made it yeah. it has not had influence from a more sort of commerce minded uh, person from a record label or from management for better or worse mm-hmm. i mean i'm sure there were times we could have used some like, yeah, let's do you back on track here. But I, to this day, feel I love the music that we've made because it's truthful. It yeah. is actually authentically what, where we were in those maybe, periods. Maybe, yeah. Time. Maybe that's why the, the, like, emphasis of or uh, um, attention of the music industry has now shifted to pop music so heavily. Well, because, it was a, because, the because there are there are multi sort of yeah you know facets to the music industry mm-hmm. and you know like in back whatever year it was when I, you know, co-wrote Wake Me Up, mm-hmm. like I went through this whole unique experience of seeing this whole other side of the industry where it was like, oh, you wrote this pop song. Like, oh, can you write 10 more of those mm-hmm. that sound yeah. just like it? And yeah. for this person or for that person, for this person, for that person. And um, I didn't like it. No. That's interesting. Wasn't, it well, wasn't, yeah. There were there were certain aspects of it that were really fun, and I met a lot of really interesting people during that period of time in my life. And I did do some things that were super fun. You know, like I you know I got to do a bunch of work with Tyler the Creator, which was awesome. I worked with a group called the Internet that was yeah. So th- those were more like just creative. That's decisions, creative. Yeah, that's creative cool. decisions. But like, there's this whole other sort of world of like songwriting. Where it's like, oh, how can we put this group of people together to create this thing that's going to generate the, it's a product. the most it's amount. It's a music product. The most right. amount of money, you mm-hmm. know? And, mm-hmm. and that, in its own way, is like its own Rubik's Cube that you're trying to solve. It's its own skill set. It's kind of like, if you gamify it, it can be fun yeah. and interesting. But it just, the, the dynamically, is very different than being in a band. Of course. Mm-hmm. And It's like, how does it make your soul feel? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Um, yeah. Lose the soul. Ultimately, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a band person. Yeah. You know? Like, it's just, like, it's just in my DNA, you know? But I'm glad I got to experience that. That was really interesting and, um, and also very educational. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. to see the, the larger landscape of what's going on. Because other other than that, it was just like a totally alien world to me. I bet. You guys have always been about that organic magic. And we were talking earlier about your show at the Hollywood Bowl. Mm-hmm. It was one of the greatest nights. She came in October to the Bowl. I was yeah, there. I saw yeah. her. <laughs> we, we had, a, we had a, a, like a, an strong, after- a strong embrace. Yes, we did. We had a great <laughs> hug. It was a powerful hug. It was yeah. an incredible night. And, of course, Aqueous Transmission came on, and I was just, like, losing my mind. Mm. And then, of course, Lizzo comes out. (laughs) I mean, can we just talk about the magic of that? Let's talk about that. (laughs) I mean, that when Lizzo came out out with the the blue. All the cards. (laughs) We need to just talk about it. It was historic. It really was. It was wild. Can we please talk? I need to hear about it from the band perspective. It was totally crazy. Okay. Because the origin of it is, is, is very funny. Yeah. Tell me the story. What's the origin of it? So... Lizzo has been like vocally expressing like a lifelong 
Huge Incubus fan. Huge, mm-hmm. huge lifelong Incubus fan. Incubus fan yeah. for a long time. Yeah. It's been like in the press, like yeah. interviews, like so the stuff gets sent to us, like Lizzo talking about like I grew up listening to Incubus, mm-hmm. one of my favorite bands. I love that. Um so I got put on a text with her like years ago. And so she, we would like text each other like every like I don't know like but like I would text her and then I'd hear back from her like 6 months later. She'd be like, "Yo, what's up?" like when are we going to do something? And be like, oh, I'm in the studio. And like, but it never was lining up. And then this one day, we decided we're going to re record Morning View. So I texted her. I talked to the band about it. And, I, and this was, I think, before like some of the controversy had happened. And um, it's a good band name, by the way. Yeah, before the controversy. No, the controversy. That is a great name. That is a great name. Um, I'll get my people on it. <laughs> yeah. I, so I, I texted her and, and, and said, hey, we're re-recording Morning View. You know, I know you play the flute. Like, would you come and, you know, play with us? And she wrote me back and was like, oh, that would be amazing. I'd love to do it. And that was like a month or two. A few months goes by. I don't even know how long it was. It could have been six months. I have no idea. I get a call from our manager, Johnny. He's like, hey, um is Lizzo playing the Hollywood Bowl with you on Friday? And, and I was like, I don't know, is she? <laughs> he was like, well, apparently she's showing up at, at uh, Soundcheck. And <laughs> like, so she's like somehow misinterpreted the text uh, to mean, I want you to come and play the show. And then we were like, all right, well, if she's going to show up at the Soundcheck, we might as, well, yeah. might as well just do it. So, um, so we actually had no idea like if Did she, she know was... this yet? Have you told her this yet? No, no uh, I never talked about it with her. I can't wait to have that conversation. I've never even talked conversation about it with her. About it. I, and I mean, so, I'm dying from this. But then, like, but like all the indicators were like, nope, she's coming. She's going to be here at 2.30. She's going to like whatever. And all of a sudden, she's there with her flute. Yeah. <laughs> and she had the whole score written out on paper. Oh, yeah. she, was she was prepared. She was very prepared. She was like, she was like I've been rehearsing for she's this. She's legit. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, yeah. like mm-hmm. and she came in and was like and was like, This is the dream of my life. Oh my god. I've been waiting I for know. this my whole life. We were all just like, Oh my god, like Better not oh, fuck this up. Okay. Yeah. To ourselves, not to yeah. her. Right. She no, was no, no, clearly no. prepared. And literally <laughs> on on like the most chaotic day you could ever imagine. Yeah. You know, just hometown show and yeah. Hollywood Bowl. It's a lot. And dealing with family and friends and all that. And so um that was that was the story. I mean, yeah, it was just this beautiful family experience. It felt like plus Lizzo. So like <laughs> this family experience highlighted by this like superstar, incredible performer yeah. who mm. also sang. She has a beautiful she, voice. Oh, she yeah. added so much She's to legit. it. Yeah. Do you guys want to hear the real story? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's hear Brandon's P of it. Yeah. Well, this is a true story, and I haven't told you until just now, but yeah. um, Lizzo and I. Well, you didn't been, tell it to me just now, but. Tell, no, tell I'm about to tell you. Right tell now. Tell He's telling, telling it right, right this moment. Lizzo and I have been FaceTiming for a few years, and I was like, you got to come and play with us. This is me talking to her on FaceTime. Okay, uh huh. You got to come and play with us on stage at the Hollywood Bowl. You're down. She's like, I'm down. We're not going to tell Mikey. <laughs> Is this true? And she goes, I love this. I'm like, show up at 2.30 and just don't tell Blow Mikey. Blow his mind. Okay. Yeah. And when you see him, yeah, call yeah. him Michael. Sneak attack. <laughs> Sneak attack. Uh-huh. And, well, however it went down, it was perfect. It was like, it art. really, really was. Yeah. It was so powerful. Wasn't that a magical? I will tell you, as yeah. a fan, it was epic. It, get, right it was Thank epic. You. Yeah, watching it back, um, like on people's iPhone videos. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. It was it, it was a moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just it remember really yeah. I remember being, you know, I was sitting in this little chair like right in the front of the stage, and she was right next to me. And when when you announced her and called her out, and she came out, I just saw the look on people's faces like they were just like. They're like just what they, they in like the they world? were like what the fuck is happening right now? Mm-hmm. Like this is the most. It's just. It was shocking to people. But yeah. then it made the most perfect sense. You yeah. know, it She's was like, like the most qualified. It was, per- it was beautiful. Yeah. It was so beautiful. I, it really the, was. We've been talking about this recently because Nicole sang um, a bunch of the, what were original background vocals mm. on the original recording of Morning View. They were all me, all the background vocals, but I was doing my best impression of a female voice <laughs> to do the background vocals. Really good. And then so, thank you. <laughs> 
she sings great as a female. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? I know. And so we kind of, I did it again, and then she sang as well, and we kind of fused them for this new recording, oh. and it sounds really, really cool. So uh, it made perfect sense with Lizzo to come and do that high part, because I was doing an impression of a female voice right. when I was like 25 or however old I yeah. was when we made the record. And she classically trained with the flute. Um, yeah. And she wrote that song Tempo. So it's like, you're qualified to be here. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just need, you need the trifecta. Yeah. It's like, Weed. did you write the song Tempo? Yeah. Can you sing like a beautiful girl? I, oh yeah. Can you play the flute? Yeah. I actually <laughs> was like, I actually was really, 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 really committed to like us just going into the song Tempo right after we you finished. Were. Yeah. Yes. But everybody was kind of like, we're thinking That's about a lot of other just, things. Well, you wanted to do it at it was sound like, check. Yeah, it was like the day. We really off. wanted to do it. Let's play tempo. I We're was like... so into it. Do you recall though, about a year and a half ago in the band room, I was like, we need to cover this song, and I played. I'd kill play tempo off his turntable. Really? Yeah. Huh. We need to cover that okay. song. You need to cover it. It's now such, you need to. Now, it's now you such need a to. Good song. Are yeah. you gonna sing the lyrics though? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm, dude, uh, my other band's called The Controversy. I mean, Nicole, this I'm needs to happen, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Nicole will sing it, and I'll just... I, might, I might get really uh, into it, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, will it have the peepaw on it? We need to know. Uh, oh, my God. I, I, I would make any any necessary contributions to make it happen. <laughs> and then we can use our, our dance moves that we learned on the last or, yeah. Or yeah. I'll sing it. I don't, I don't give a okay. fuck. Okay, yeah, we'll trade verses. It'd be yeah. great. Let me ask you guys, since you've now known each other for decades, decades, and have been in a band together for... Including Nicole. Right. Decades. Right. For, what, 33 years doing music? I mean, how has your relationship evolved? It's kind of the same for the Is it the same? No, I mean, I I think, like, you know, um, I mean, we've all seen each other go through different periods of time and transitions and um it's i think that's just like a beautiful thing to like Mm -hmm. to be able to like be with somebody throughout you know all these like major changes you know like i'm a dad i have all i have four kids you know you have to say i have all the kids i have all the kids (laughs) all the kids yeah you know and it's like it's like that also has its own dynamic Mm -hmm. to like writing music It, it makes it a lot harder yeah. Yeah. to like find time to like really devote and really focus, focus. and really like um it's amazing to think about it in that perspective I'm sorry to interrupt you but I just want to put this out there yeah. as far as like the scope of how long we've known each other when we became friends we didn't have hair on our penises yet yeah <laughs> yeah we grew that was hair. exactly what I was thinking when I said hair. that you've known and each other a long time. You knew that about each other. So close. Uh, right. Kind of, you knew you that. Know, you could confirm so okay. the lack we, we of hair. To, we used to surf <laughs> together and you, yeah. see, you, know, you see stuff. <laughs> right. You see yeah. stuff. Cold penises. We, so we grew up, our, our original bond was <laughs> not only. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> love she's that. She's beginning a crash course. I love in it. Like, uh, so good. Poor boy humor. A uh, crash course? We're both used to being around guys our whole lives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What am I thinking? Sorry. Yeah. Anyway. They, they apologize all the time. I'm sorry, that was that was too much. And I'm like, it's a certain breed of female, though. Like, I feel like we're always around guys, and yeah. it's just like that's just normal. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Like, there's no difference. We're still like you. Pee and poop jokes, just in yeah. us. We're like you. You you kind of gotten a, a real taste of of who we are. I think. Mm-hmm. But I think we're there's parts of us that are still like so reserved. We're still. Di- I know. I mean. A little There's bit conscious, a little say. self-aware <laughs> yeah. still. You yeah. see it and yeah. you can see it? And I, I, you should I, call them out on it. I, I, I like want Nicole's everyone here, to feel as like comfortable as they can yeah. without, you know, like, like it, I don't want anyone to feel like they can't say certain things. You it's know not, no, I mean? it's like, not that. We're yeah. just, okay. I'm, I'm trying to, I suppose, uh, just boring. like, because we've literally grown up to <laughs> not together. lose our bass player. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're not trying to scare you off yet. <laughs> Away, I have full confidence that Nicole can take it. Yeah. I have full confidence yeah. in you. Yeah. Like our She's conversation got we're having yesterday. Yes, about I know. That's, that's what I was going to reference. Wait, what, was, was like, what happened yesterday? We were just talking about somebody that we grew up with whose name we won't mention. He'll know. He'll uh, know who he oh is. Oh, God. But, like, <laughs> You're really going to go there. Like, right. you know, little boys, you grow up, and when you figure out that this weird little therm arm actually, like, 
functional. Yeah. Like you just don't leave it alone for like the kind of the rest of your life. Yeah. And we started getting this conversation <laughs> about like the onset of the discovery of, of uh, self pleasure, yeah. we shall call it. And I kept like, we kept saying these things and we were laughing and all of us were like, the, like side eye at me. Like, I'm like, is this too, is this too much yet? And she's like, no. Nope, As if right women can't relate to this. I know. I, mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I suppose. What is masturbation? Yeah. What are you guys talking about? Yeah. yeah. Throw it out there. I think it's like a protective. I, I don't know because we just we've only known each other like a, like yeah. less than a year. Oh, right? and it's totally understandable. Yeah. But you should call them out on it whenever you can sense they're being like, can, you know, like holding mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're like Tell guys. I don't know if that would make guys. you better. <laughs> just lock up. I mean, totally. Yeah. All right. Let's quickly do yeah. deep cuts. Okay. Jesus. We're gonna make it quick. Okay. Ready. Name a song, album, or artist that changed your life. Um, I think for me, it's very much about like an instrument, like bass. Yeah. Like, uh, Michelle and the Diocello, you know? Amazing, yeah. Um, bass players like that. Kind of like when I was coming up, I didn't really realize that there was different genders in what I was doing until um, people started to really like, point it out to me. Like, oh, what's it like being a woman playing this instrument? Right. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Is it different? Right. Um, and then seeing women like that, like powerhouse, just fucking having their own projects and like mm. that kind of stuff oh, that's impacted awesome. me. That's, cool. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm going to have to say um, Post by Bjork. Like that, like, because I was like kind of like in my earlier, like earliest teen years, like kind of like learning guitar, like learning music through guitar playing. Yeah. And then when I discovered Bjork's music, it made me like sort of hyper aware of like all these other things that were happening in, in, in her music. And not that it made me like less interested in guitar, but I wanted to like figure out how to use my guitar more to like create like different textures mm-hmm. and, and um, provide like beds of sound for like these different sort of soundscapes. And I think that like really informed everything that came after it because like I was still like in love with like rock music, but I feel like that sort of just that way of thinking about music really transformed like my sense of musicality overall. That's and also I yeah. just loved her voice and her singing. So I couldn't unique. even understand yeah. half of what she was saying. It didn't, it didn't it even didn't matter. It was great when she so sings. So unique. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. For sure. What For me, it's definitely, uh, time of life dependent, you know, because there have yeah. been so many different phases yes. of what music kind of penetrated into yeah. the moments. But what came to mind when you asked the question, um, there are two singers, um, one of them, uh, Jeff Buckley, Ugh. and his record Grace. Grace. But then the song Grace, mm-hmm. which um, yeah. I know just from hearing interviews with him, his a lot of his vocal stuff was inspired by somebody else who I was listening to around the same period of time, but I hadn't made the connection until Jeff Buckley said it, but uh, Nusret Fateh Ali Khan, yeah. who is, uh, uh, this, he was this incredible um, Pakistani devotional singer, and his music is just, it's like it's from a different planet, the way mm-hmm. he sang, you know? And I felt that way about Jeff, too. Was, yes. I didn't know that uh, you could sing that way, and then I also was deeply enamored of the, uh, sort of permissions he gave himself to sing that way, as well as Nusret. Yeah. Um, I just didn't know you could do that. And so right. it was really, it made me really check in with, could I sing that way? And I, I started to find all these, di- I found out that I had a bigger range than I was giving myself credit for. Wow. So those two people. That's sure. incredible. I think it's, it's really interesting. I like these questions always kind of send me thinking because it, I, I feel like a lot of the people who impact and change your life are not, for me, it's not really like an artist that I could name that people would know necessarily. It's like mm-hmm. the interactions I have with with musicians and artists on more of like a smaller scale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like their direct impact and influence on me and like kind of where I go in life and just little phrases people could say to me that's like kind of... Yeah. That is life changing. Yeah. yeah. You know? Absolutely. Um, that's a really good well, point. And, yeah. also, and it's also like so interesting as like you know, a 40 a something now, like all the popular music that was popular at the time, like, you know, in the 80s, the 90s, early 2000s, like as growing up, there was like a lot of music that I thought that I like didn't like. 
Yeah. And like I hear it now and I'm like, damn, it's so yeah. good. <laughs> you know, like I'm yeah. like, I'm like, yeah. I can't fucking believe how good that Lionel Richie song is. Right. Damn. Yeah. You yeah. liked that when we were kids. Come like, on. We were like, obsessed with that. You know show. I mean? Always like Lionel Richie. No, but like, yeah. no, but, <laughs> no, but like, just like. You didn't like, realize how cool it was, maybe. I didn't, yeah. realize, like, yeah. I didn't realize how well it, like yeah. something was yeah. produced. Or, right. Like, how, yeah. Like, yeah, like I have a different, a different appreciation for like things that were just around that we took for granted yeah. because they were just around yeah. right you know like it was on the radio all the time yeah so you like, take it for granted yeah you know like careless whispers man oh that's mm. unbelievable like, oh, yeah damn. incredible you know wham like, george michael i mean so so good yep um, you need to watch the last christmas video when by I the wish way I wrote. it's the best yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that is right right yes, um if you weren't a musician what would you be Hold on, I have to think about this. <laughs> I know, because I do it as sort of a, a side gig. It's not even really a side gig. Oh, to me, it's as important as making music, but I paint. Yeah, that's right. You're so an artist. Yeah. I kind of thought growing up that I was going to be just in the, the arts. I thought I was going to be a painter. Yeah. Um, and uh, so making music is like a different way of painting. Different it's medium. painting with sound, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if that's kind of a cop-out answer, but that's my answer. No, that's because totally you, you take that seriously <laughs> yeah. and you do yeah. it. You absolutely yeah. do. I would be a pharmacologist. Really? Yeah. Um, I actually own a biopharmaceutical development company that's, treat, that's uh, developing drugs to treat uh, autoimmune inflammatory diseases, ranging from skin diseases to cancers to other, you know, in, inflammatory response. We need to give Mike and a that, round of applause. Yeah. I mean, and he that, is like, I mean, and that, unbelievable. And that is like something that like captivates me in a way that's exactly the same as how music captivated me when I was 15. Oh, wow. It's like the same, it's the same, it scratches ex the exact same itch. And it's curiosity, like, isn't it? I totally mm -hmm. just like, like Worth once learning. you dive down a rabbit hole and start learning, um, you know, if you find the right mentors and, um, and and get the right you know get the right mentorship you can you can just spend your you know you can spend your whole life living uh, whole life learning 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 things yes music is a, a great example you can spend your entire life just learning new things about music yeah. and and there's so much in the world that you can spend your whole life learning about so you know that that's just one of them i think it keeps you young when you keep learning if you're forever a student right isn't that mm. what keeps you excited and, and curious mm -hmm. and, and alive mm -hmm. what about you nicole um, there is absolutely nothing that keeps me like as centered and in a trance as music does. Um, so I can't imagine if I couldn't play music, that would be very, very hard. But, um, there was a point in time where I was really, really deep into sculpting when I was young. Wow. And, uh, there was a point where I was kind of branching off contemplating which one to pursue. I did um, not know this about that's you. That's interesting. Yeah. That. yeah. Um, should we be getting clay on the bus? Oh yeah. That, oh, that would be so much fun. Um, and that almost happened and, you know, it doesn't surprise me that I didn't do it, but, um, there could have been a world. Absolutely. And it still can be done. You can still yeah. do that. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. art studio yeah. could be its yes. own, like, wing of, like, the venue. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. Like last but not least, are there words that you live by? Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Learning and sharing. Oh, I love that. My wife and I say that to each other constantly. I like that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Mm. Um, what comes to mind for me is something that um, Ben Kenny uh, said once as somebody asked him the same question. And um, he said, uh, measure twice, cut once. Oh, my God. That's such a good one. Right? That's such a dad one. I yeah. love that. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad says that to me. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one, right? Oh, that's a good one. That's great. Yeah. 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 I don't have any clever phrases like that. I'm mm. in a phase in my life where I'm dramatically changing, mm -hmm. um, learning a lot about myself. And um, I think things that maybe I can hang on to and tell myself to live by these phrases. Um, I'm scaring myself with how dramatically that can totally flip. So, yeah. Hmm. Oh, no. Learn and right share. Now. Yeah. Learn yeah. and share. And I, I like share. learning. Sharing. Measure yeah. twice. And yeah. yeah. We, we gave it to you. It's great. Yeah. Guys, thank you so, so much. And I'm so excited about this new chapter. And I can't wait to come to as many shows as possible as I do. And You're always invited. Oh, thank you, Mike. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Dave awesome. Grohl. <laughs> oh my God. We'll be right back. I know. I need an incubus one. Well, that was so special to me. Uh, what a gift to be able to sit down with the guys and Nicole and just to hear all of their stories. And I will tell you, they are working on new music, and I am just as excited as you are. Thank you so much for being part of the Allison Hagendorf Show presented by Cloudwater. I want to give a huge thank you to our other partners as well, Danny Wimmer Presents and Karma Sauce. Thank you to our friends at Arctic Zone, and thank you to Late Night Gypsy Clothing for making me this custom Led Zeppelin bodysuit. And most importantly, thank you. I would love to hear from you. So please like, comment, rate, review, whatever you're feeling, and reach out to me on socials at Ali Hagendorf. I'd love to connect. Let me know who I should interview next and what made you smile today. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. And remember, you're a rock star.